Hi, my name is Steven. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to my life surviving schizophrenia. In May of 2012, I was admitted to the UCLA Resident Center Psychiatric Hospital. I was there for two weeks. I want to tell you a little about my stay there today. I remember when I got there, they took me into a small room and it was around dinner time, so they gave me some chicken and rice. It's actually delicious. Whoever said hospital food is bad, it can be really good at times. Um, yeah, and so after a little while of that, I had dinner and I remember they took me to the fourth floor. So I went up the elevators and they started wheeling me to my room. And almost everyone in the rooms that I passed by, they stuck out their hands and high-fived me as I went through, which made me feel at home in a way. Of course, at the time, I didn't really know what was going on and I was kind of a little nervous and scared and worried as to what was happening. Um, so everyone was high-fiving me and I high-fived them back. So they brought me to the office in the ward that I was staying in. And I remember one of the girls, she came out of her room and she comes to me and she asks me, do I like sandals? I don't really remember what I said. I was pretty pretty mortified at the time as to what was going on. But I remember they told her, go back to your room, like politely, and so she did. And they asked me a few questions and they kind of, I guess, set me up there to stay for the next two weeks. Of course, we didn't know how long it'd be at the time, but it ended up being two weeks. And I remember then they brought me to my room where I met my roommate, um, who I believe was having homicidal thoughts at the time. And that's why he was there. He was one of the nicest people I've ever met. And he was there with me for the first week. I remember the next day, I didn't get much sleep that night, so I was pretty tired, but we had, well, I guess, yeah, our daily schedule consisted of waking up in the morning, having breakfast where we were able to choose uh, or what we wanted to eat for the week on a menu. And so we'd fill out like oatmeal, the cinnamon, and uh, for lunch, maybe you wanted chicken tenders and we'd sign up for that. And then that'd be our plan for the week and have our meals prepared that way. Um, we also had, sorry, must've been after lunch, we would go um, walk out up to the roof, like a concealed, sealed roof, but with windows so we could see out. And they had ping pong there. They got really good at ping pong. Um, there was all sorts of activities, some basketball, and just a good way to get some fresh air. However, on the way out, we passed by a room. Now, I'm not exactly sure what happened in that room. But I always remember as we passed by, we'd hear screaming. We thought it was like a chronic spasm room. I don't think that's accurate, but that's what we thought it was at the time. And the nurses and doctors had never said what it was. We also had um, every day group therapy where we just talk about all of our issues and how we felt and any Anything we had to say there, we would say. I believe once a week or twice a week, we would have some sort of activity as well. I think three times. Where we would go, and I remember one of them was arts and crafts. So we'd have arts and crafts time. I remember making a wooden sailboat there, painting it. Um, simple kit to make it. And everyone could choose an acti or a craft there that they would make. I also remember they had the nurses there would have play music. So they'd play their favorite music and they'd say, hey, what do you, what do you like? What kind of music do you like? And we'd play our favorite music as well. At the time, I was not really into music, which I know sounds kind of weird, but I wasn't. So I didn't have anything to say there, but I um, remember them dancing around and keeping our spirits high at that time too. We also had, we'd go to a kitchen essentially, and we'd make pizza. So we'd you know, put on our toppings, the dough and stuff, and 
they'd help us put it into the oven and cook it, and we'd have our own pizza there that we'd make. Um, I also remember they had me in a music class at first. I, I, guess I didn't like it at the time, so I don't really remember if I stayed in that more than once. But there was music classes there as well. And every day, we also had quiet time for, I believe it was an hour. I did not like these quiet times. We literally couldn't do almost anything. And we were just in our rooms, quietly thinking, I guess. Um, at the time, I was still suicidal, so I had plans to break out the window with just my fists or a chair, whatever I could get. Um, break down the window, jump onto a nearby tree, climb down, and run to my house wouldn't have worked but that was my plan never came to that never even tried but I, that was my my thought yeah um i also remember of course i had many tests so i had all sorts of scans of me and stuff and i remember at one point they had um they hooked me up to uh an MRI with contrast. And so if you don't know contrast, at least what I had was a solution, I believe it was a shellfish solution that they put into your blood and it is supposed to make it show up more in the MRI. And that's supposed to show more clearly everything in your body that the MRI can scan to see if there's anything wrong there. I also remember one morning there I guess the plan was to have me have a spinal tap. So they hooked me up to my veins right here to prepare me for the intravenous, or the IV rather, um, for while I was getting a spinal tap. I remember everyone was really worried for me because that sounds terrible. I was scared too. That didn't end up happening. I believe that's because of the insurance or something like that. I forget now. And about a weekend, I remember the roommate I had was ready to go home, or at least wherever he was going. He was being discharged, um, which was really sad. I'd come to know him as a good friend by that point. Uh, he even made me this. He even made me this friendship bracelet before he left and he gave that to me. Sadly, I wasn't able to say goodbye, really. He left too early in the morning and, well, he just left really abruptly, but yeah. yeah. I remember actually one of the first things that happened when I got there with him, he was really annoyed that I was there because he wanted to sneak out to meet the girl down the hall and when I got there that night, that ruined all plans that he had for that to happen. Um, yeah. So, remember he also had tie-dye socks that he cut holes in. That was his style, like knee-high socks with colors and holes. Um, was a really great person though, very good friend. And I wish I'd been able to stay in touch, but of course that didn't happen. Uh, my second roommate, I don't remember as well. But he was, he was a nice guy, too. Oh, he's a good person. Everyone there were good people. Very good people. Man, yeah. The hardest thing I saw there was one of the younger kids. He came, I don't know, must have been a week and a half in to when I was there, to my stay there. And he didn't really know what was going on at all. I just know he liked eating pizza and sugary cereal. That was his favorite. But at one point he started having, I guess, an episode, you'd say. And he started flailing around and screaming. And the nurses had to go and sedate him. That was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to sit and watch.
um, Elsa member weren't really allowed to have food in there or anything in your room. But I thought I was being sneaky at the time, but I had my parents bring me sunflower seeds. So I had something to snack on. Because you can only eat when you're allowed to eat, like for a few times a day. And I remember at times we really wanted more to eat and more, not, not that we're starving, starved or anything, but we just wanted more, like a snack or something. And so we made plans to try to sneak into the kitchen and steal honey packets. That, that didn't work out, but that was our plan. Um, one time during my stay, we had um, a guy come and teach us and show us magic tricks. I don't think he was a doctor or anything. He just came to help cheer us up. And he showed us how to shuffle cards and do simple magic tricks like that, card tricks. That was really cool. That helped lift our spirits a bit. Yeah. So I was there for two weeks, um, which helped bring me back into reality and helped me a lot. We had a whole list of goals on a, a whiteboard that I had to clear off before I could go home. Like, uh, the one I remember most was talk to my mom because at the time she was my psychotic object and I hated her, which was just irrational, but that's how it was. And so I remember two weeks in or later, I was discharged. I went home. Yeah. Still left me a little scarred after what I saw, but of course, much healthier. And yeah, so after I was discharged, came home, continued on. So that's about all I gotta say for now. Hope you all have a happy and healthy rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.